Hello. Now we are going to talk about perspectives to new product development and innovation projects. And there is some emphasis on gates in this presentation as decision, important decision-making points and review points for projects and also uh, the connection of the project to the firm level uh, which is also important that innovations normally are done for the kind of a parent firm or parent firms and uh, thereby the connection of something new that is created in the project uh, to the firm and firm's business is an interesting issue. Um, let's talk a little bit about the front end of innovation. The front end means uh, the early phase. And here we can see a typical new product development uh, project process where there are phases or stages if you like and then there are gates or uh, review points or decision-making points in between the phases. The front end uh, really more or less refers to the early stages and in new product development uh, these are the phases where the product concept, new product concept is created and after that uh, we go to development and we start really investing a lot of money into uh, building uh, the actual product and uh, launching it to the market and, and, and so on. So it could even be considered that uh, after this front end uh, and when we have entered to the actual uh, implementation of the new product development, it, ca it can be consider considered even a kind of a point of no return uh, when we have invested a lot and we are fire sure that uh, it will become a successful product, then we just should have it quite quickly in, in the market. Okay, um, the front end uh, is also many times described uh, with a non-linear that is a cyclical uh, process model where uh, really uh, we uh, identify opportunities, we uh, iterate and we find an appropriate concept. And then uh, at certain point we make an exit to new product development that is NPD uh, implementation or TSG, G, which is Technology Screening Gate. Uh, it's rather interesting question that what happens in gates. And uh, this picture also has put on parallel in the lower part of the picture a typical facing of a uh, delivery project or more kind of industrial um, project where you really build something uh, so that you can also compare uh, the names of the faces and uh, uh, if there is any difference. But I also want to emphasize that uh, when for example Jouni Honkala from OF Pöyry discussed in his video about uh, the project and project implementation, he was also emphasized uh, the gates or milestones. So it is also important that this kind of investment project or delivery project is uh, done in phases or stages and there is a kind of a review in gates or milestones, if you want to call them milestones. Okay, what happens in gates? Uh, in red color, uh, on right top corner of this picture, uh, uh, we can see that in project portfolio management, uh, uh, we make decisions go or no go. When we come to a gate, then we go further to the next phase or then we don't go. We can put the project on hold and not 
do it for a while. We can take it on later on if you like. Or we can kill the project. So we can also kill it really for good and uh, think that okay, uh, there is no reason to come back to this initiative anymore later. Or then one possibility is that we return to the previous stage. That we are not satisfied uh, what we have completed in the previous stage and we want that uh, the project goes back to the previous sta uh, stage and com uh, complements itself until we can really make a decision which might be for example a go decision or something else. Um, to continue the same question that what happens in Gates, uh, Ericsson had a props uh, project management system and uh, in that system they had the toll gate decision analysis. They called gates as toll gates. And the in interesting dimensions there are, um, uh, for, uh, for example, the business situation at the top. Will the project and its outcome result in profitable solution? Uh, and is it still in agreement with the organization's business goals? Then, uh, to the right, uh, there is uh, uh, the question of use of resources. Will the uh, expected benefit from the project and its uh, outcome uh, justify the effects on resources? And then uh, to the left, there is the project status. Uh, does the progress of the project uh, prove uh, its ability? to meet uh, requirements uh, uh, on, on the project outcome. So, and then at the bottom, the kind of a found foundation, foundational layer here is confidence and commitment. Are we as a project organization still committed to the project? Uh, do we believe in it? So is there a possibility to continue from that respect, that there is belief and uh, kind of urge to go on uh, based on how the organization thinks about the project. Okay, this was uh, the kind of a gate, uh, gate content in props. Then an important aspect here uh, when we are talking about innovation and new product development is that there is a funnel where we have first a lot of ideas when we come to a gate then maybe some uh, projects are killed or put on hold or something like that. And then a fewer uh, number of projects or smaller number of projects enters to the feasibility uh, stage and even few, uh, 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 smaller number of projects uh, uh, enters to development and so on until uh, only few of the early ideas end to market launch and uh, uh, real product that uh, is uh, introduced in the market. So, we have been also researching about how executives control the uh, iterative and uh, very flexible front-end activities in new product development projects or innovation projects, if you like. And uh, in the management control, there are certain mechanisms that uh, we elaborated in our research. And uh, what is the management control and what these mechanisms are? They are not necessarily only top down from the top management to the project management uh, uh, type of uh, mechanisms. But there is also, uh, there can be a bottom-up vivid discussion from the project managers to top managers and uh, a shared understanding and uh, shared perspectives of what should be done. So the next picture uh, illustrates this. So when we are talking about management control, uh, these four areas are 
uh, illustrating the control systems. So if we start from uh, the left bottom uh, part, so we are talking about, about diagnostic control system and there the strategy is seen as a plan. If we move to the top right corner, we have boundary systems and uh, there the strategy is considered as a position. So we set boundaries where we want to operate and we prohibit uh, the project from going out from certain boundaries. We don't innovate, for example, in this area of business. We want to keep our ideas uh, limited to within these boundaries. In the bottom right, there are interactive control system strategies seen as a patterns of streams of actions. So the executives and the project people can talk, they can uh, mm, take action and in this way uh, implement the strategy and even renew the strategy. And then in the top left corner, there are belief systems where strategy is considered as a perspective or collective mind. There really the executives go deep discussion with, for example, the project people and uh, vice versa. And there is a communication in teams, groups uh, at all levels. And in this way, uh, the strategy is based on beliefs, shared beliefs uh, within the organization. So this was about the connection uh, and uh, of, of the projects to the management of the firm. Well, uh, we have taken this uh, picture from Groenwelt, uh, who really illustrates two important dimens dimensions in any uh, innovation uh, projects. The other is market, when the product is required in the market. For example, in this horizontal axis, is it needed five to ten years from now, three to th five years from now, or one to two years from now. And then, in addition to market, there is the vertical axis, and that is technology. Both are sources for uncertainty. And uh, the vertical axis, uh, uh, the technology is well understood in the project. It might be proven or uh, it might be not yet proven. And the idea is that we must run the projects by knowing where we are positioned. So if we have a well understood technology and uh, we want to take it from five to ten years from now to the market, we would call that a missed opportunity. No use of starting working on that kind of a project because others are already sooner in the market. So if we have non-proven technology and we want to have it in the market one to two years from now, so that is a problem. It's maybe impossible to do that. And here is kind of a balance. So if we have proven technology and uh, we have three to five years into the market, so then uh, uh, that is more balanced view. And also here, if we have non-proven technology, we must understand that our project is a type of a research project and, and, and we only can have that technology from five to ten years in the market. And then if we have well understood technology, we can have our projects to take it to the market much earlier from one to two years. The same story than in this slide is provided in the next slide. In the vertical axis there is uncertainty and uh, in uh, the horizontal axis there is allocation of uh, resources. So um, the questions are in research projects where we start from an idea what is possible. Then from three to five years uh, we have this blue box where we ask, can we do it? And then in uh, the one to two years uh, bubble, we ask, and how we will do it. You maybe have heard about uh, Clayton Christensen's Innovators Dilemma. 
But and the innovators dilemma is connected to this message that I want to deliver in this slide. The innovators dilemma means that uh, the innovator must decide whether it improves the existing products, makes small improvements for current customers and current markets, or whether the innovator really wants to go for something new that even renews the whole company's business. A wild uh, thing, wild innovation, which really takes the company to new area and renews the company. Um, when we are uh, estimating ideas or projects or project initiatives, there are two dimensions in this picture. The other is urgent, whether that uh, looks like an urgent issue in our business, yes or no. And the other dimension is important, whether that really is important or not to the company. If the idea or the project is uh, urgent, so urgent, yes. So if, if it's not important, so it might not be a kind of a not so big problem, we can do it anyways. Uh, it might uh, cause some extra costs and unnecessary costs because we do non-important things which sound like very urgent. And if it's uh, urgent and important, then it's uh, a good deal to uh, promote that idea and take that project forward. And if it's not important nor urgent, so definitely we are not interested to do that anyways. But then the question is that uh, uh, lower uh, right side box where we are talking about non-urgent but important projects. So if something is really important but we cannot see the importance because it doesn't look like very urgent from our current business perspective, for example, that is so new uh, idea that it would even fall outside our current business strategy, but maybe it would be important for our future business strategy. So the problem is that probably no one cares about uh, uh, ideas, initiatives or projects that are in this box. And maybe the company still should go for that, for its importance. Um, this message coming from Ansof, who is a very well-known strategist, uh, tells some problems of advancing things, ideas, project uh, prospects, projects uh, in uh, the company. And uh, it is about information flow. Uh, to the left there is environment. And the problem is that there might be a surveillance filter. Which means that uh, we cannot see properly what there is in the environment. We cannot observe. And uh, there is a filter for getting in the data to our understanding. Then there is a mentality filter which we have as human beings. So do we really understand what that data means? And it's a filter of uh, creating some perception. Then again there is a power filter which uh, is an uh, obstacle of uh, uh, having the information to go to right place. For example, uh, there is a power filter between the project people and executives and that's why many times executives know much less than those lower level project people that are in the market interface with customers and uh, with technology interface with the latest technologies. So there is no communication and uh, the filters take care of that the management uh, doesn't get maybe the information and doesn't do the right thing. Also within organization there are other kinds of power filters, for example, based on people's backgrounds and training. So if you are a mechanical engineering and another one, uh, other guy is an uh, electrical engineer, 
uh, even though the mechanical engineers uh, would, would see that there is something wrong in uh, uh, electrical engineers area so uh, there might be so big respect to these uh, professions that uh, they don't uh, give the information or the other one doesn't uh, want to receive the information and these all filters hinder from this all thing from the environment uh, com uh, coming to data perception and information uh, getting at the level of action so whether we really do right things okay um, this was wall that I wanted to deliver in the, at this time and uh, hope to talk to you soon about these issues and much more. Thanks very much for being with me here in this uh, video session. Bye now.